Let me bring in my next guest, Victoria Rao, founder of the Rao Foster Children's uh, Positive Plan. She's also the author of The Women Who Raised Me. She herself was a foster child and does so, such great work. Also, we know you from your TV uh, stardom days. Great to see you again, Victoria. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for inviting me. Let's start first. Put us, put us in, in that world of being a foster child. What, what is it like, and, and this time of year, where do the thoughts of a foster child go? Sure. Well, November, first of all, is National Adoption Month, where on a single day we're able to cut through all of the red tape and actually execute around 4,000 adoptions all at once. Here in Los Angeles, we have uh, Judge Michael Nash of the Edelman Children's Courthouse, who's exemplary. Uh, and this is a very happy occasion. Um, I have had the good fortune of good foster parenting. I've also had bad foster parenting, but I decided to write about the good in my New York Times bestseller, The Women Who Raised Me. It is astonishing that we have nearly a half a million children still in foster care. We have 100,000 foster children available for adoption right now. Uh, but before I go any further, I want to thank our court-appointed special advocates, our guardian ad litems. I want to thank Bishop T.D. Jakes in Potter's House in Texas, uh, Bishop uh, Blake here at uh, Church and God in Christ, One Church, One Child, uh, Child, Child Welfare League of America, the Annie E. Casey Foundation, all of the commissions nationally, the Department of Children and Family Services. But until, at the executive order of this country, until we have real Congress and legislative change really care and not attaching children like pork to a bill, we're not going to have change. We're going to continue to have children be lost, slip through the cracks, and be killed. And, that's and that, the reality. And that's what happened here in, in, in this case. So, uh, Victoria, from your perspective, where, you know, where's the, you think the solution has to come from government? That, that we need to make this a priority? And, well, and certainly, certainly. I mean, President Bill Clinton changed effectively child welfare to extend beyond 18 for independent living uh, necessities. However, we really need to look at the human condition of a social worker. They are human. They are not robots. They have 40 or more. Some have 60, 70 cases. This is unrealistic. Um, I think I might have had two social worker visits when we lived on that dirt road in Maine a year. And that is the reality for many, many children, where a social worker is so taxed that they begin to lie. They begin to fabricate, which is in the case of Relia, where a social worker made poor judgment and decided to change paperwork, which she never could have imagined uh, was connected to a murder. And now she will have to answer for that crime. But we have to look at the mental health of our social workers. We have to start at that fundamental place. Nobody wants to talk about mental health, but that is exactly what we need to talk about because not everyone is perfect. And there needs to be a better system around who is watching our children who are orphans of the living.